Hey, Positive Filter listeners, uh, this is Philip Wilkerson, back with another episode of Positive Filter. Uh, this is called the Eastern Ace Conference Recap Podcast episode. And so during this episode, um, I'm just going to be having multiple people coming in, uh, jumping on the mic real quick, and sharing their experiences with the conference, Eastern Ace, when they have a moment of time, and then I'll just edit this all together. And so um, I hope this is an exciting show, and we're going to really enjoy it welcome to positive filter with your host Philip wilkerson a podcast that focuses on friends family health and career with a little self-help along the way please join me in this journey for self-improvement and i hope what i have to share will make you a better person thus making the world a better place i hope you enjoy the show i hope you enjoy the show i hope you enjoy the show So the first person we have up for this collaborative collection testimonial uh, podcast is my good friend, Whitney Kerr. Now, I think it's also a great way that she's starting off and setting the tone for this recap because she actually was the co-chair of this actual conference. So this was somewhat her baby and child. And I think on the last day, it'd be really, really good to see her insights on this experience so and she's on she's i got it for a brief moment of time so you know just going to ask her some questions here inside so whitney uh you already uh been on the podcast i don't think you need to do a full introduction again but maybe in in this sense for eastern ace sure. all right hey so whitney carr they she how y'all doing um <laughs> 2023 annual conference co-chair that's that's all I got for you. Um, and I guess next year, the programming uh, <laughs> programming person. So, yay. Happy. <laughs> so, you know, obviously, this is, um, this is a recap. You know, mm-hmm. take us through the process. Uh, when you learned about starting this, it's kind of like event management. Mm-hmm. When you started being involved with the planning. And then take us through some of the timelines and uh, significant dates for planning for you. Uh, Sure. So we started, I want to say, like, immediately after uh, last year's conference, right? Um, Mary Alice and Sharissa came up, and they were giving us, uh, us, Mallory and I, um, you know, tips on what we should do for next year, ideas and things of that nature. Um, You know, a lot of people was coming up to us with ideas as well. Um, Literally after um, Dr. Marijuana Pepsi came and, you know, did her her closing keynote – um, and everything shut down. Everybody was pretty much crowding around us. Um, but pretty much during the summer, I want to say June or July when we had uh, whatever training it was um, or meeting during the summer and afterwards I got COVID. But yeah, <laughs> whatever meeting it was, um, that's pretty much when we started um, getting things together. So what I'm hearing is this was a year long, 12 month, almost year to year initiative. So thinking about that big picture, mm-hmm. how did you break this up into making it ma- – I, I bet it ramped up near the closer to the three months, but how was that as a long-term project in addition to your normal nine-to-five job? Honestly, at the beginning it was pretty slow to the point where I was like, I'm not doing anything. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. Um, but, you know, I had a conversation uh, with Sharissa. I had a conversation with Junior, and they both were like, look, it's going to be slow right now. Um, but when, um, you know, next year hits, so this was 2022, when 2023 comes, um, at the beginning of the year you're going to start seeing an influx of work that needs to be done, a lot of deadlines that needs to uh, be hit. Um, and that definitely happened um, at the beginning of the uh, this year. Um, and I, I guess in terms of balancing, you know, work and EA's Eastern Ace uh, stuff, it. it I mean, I had a whole lot of things going on at work in general. You know, um, I was thinking about doing a transition, especially at the beginning of this year, um, going through that interviewing process and whatnot. Um, so it definitely became like a, a, a juggling act, um, seeing what I needed to prioritize because I'm the type of person to take you know, hours on hours on hours studying for an interview to ensure that I don't go in looking crazy. But, um, you know, it was manageable because I I had an awesome team um, that was able to 
pretty much operate without um, Mallory or I being on top of them and micromanaging, which is something that we both don't like doing. Um, so shout out to the team, shout out to the squad, 2023 <laughs> conference of co-chairs. Y'all were amazing. So uh, in regards to, you know, it ramps up, um, if you can, you know, and I think this will be my last question before shout outs and plugs so that you can get back to what you're doing for the conference. Let's say you have a crystal ball, and in this crystal ball you can give yourself advice back in that last conference right after Pepsi, you know, marijuana Pepsi jumped off stage. What would you tell that Whitney that just got this project, this conference, what would you tell that Whitney in regards to preparation or yourself or just anything? What what would you tell yourself in that moment? Um, Time machine. I would tell myself to be patient um, because I was really just based on all of the other conferences and, and large scale events that I've been a part of. It's always seemed like there was like work to do in the immediate as soon as you find out that you're taking charge of a specific task. But, you know, this time it wasn't it wasn't like that. Um, so definitely be patient, but also know that you don't have to do everything. You know, I'm definitely superhuman, um, but I don't have to be because there's always a team of individuals that have specific responsibilities that will be able to hold things down without, you know, you having to hold any hands or, you know, be all up in their faces and, and, and things of that nature. So, yeah, um, patience is key. Um, and just, you know, be mindful of the fact that the team is there, the squad is there. All right, and that's the last part. Shout out some plugs before you go, and then we'll we'll call, we'll get on to our next interview. Whoever jumps in, sure, yeah. So definitely shout out to the squad. Um, all the uh, subcommittee co-chairs they did a phenomenal job at all of their specific roles. Um, definitely programming. Shout out to them because I, I feel like. Every single person that has approached me about this conference uh, uh, during this time said that all of the uh, sessions were absolutely phenomenal. So programming, definitely. Um, and, and definitely shout out to my, my co-chair, Mallory. You know, we, we did a great job. So, yeah, it's over. <laughs> well, you did a great job. I'm very proud of you, Whitney. Shout out to you, gang gang. Um, and thank you so much for joining. I know you're very busy. But this this project is done. Breathe easy, relax, take care of yourself. Um, I know everyone, in addition to me, is so happy to convene and that this went really well. So uh, this is something to hang your hat on and be very proud of yourself. So congratulations. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate you. Shout out to you, too, because you held me down as well. Kept me sane. (laughs) Gang. All right. Hello, Positive Filter listener, uh, listeners, listeners. listeners. Um, this is, uh, we're continuing our Eastern Ace Conference recap with our multitude guest. And, you know, we're going to be doing one-on-one interviews. Uh, the next person we got up is one of my mentors, uh, Miss Jill Milan. Um, now, I think if you, um, well, I think you heard her name in this conference multiple times because uh, she is the GOAT. I said that last time, and I didn't get the recording, so I need to repeat that again. (laughs) She is the GOAT. Um, And what we mean by that is that multitude, many people will probably give her credit for her outreach and identifying people and getting them involved and being the most welcoming person in leadership that I've met. And so, uh, uh, Jill, can you just give the listeners a brief who you are, and then I'm just going to ask one or two questions. I know you're very busy. You, you're kissing, you know, kissing babies, shaking hands, and all that stuff that people do. But um, go ahead. Sure. My name is Jill Milan. Um, I've been a member of Eastern Ace um, I'm, since the late '90s. Um, the funny thing is that at this conference, I, I was always, I felt like I was always the young kid, and I just came, come to realize recently that I am the. Um, at, you say goat, I say old timer. Uh, so that's kind of kind of the difference there. But I have, I, I was talking the other day to someone, and they said, "Well, how many Eastern East conferences have you been? When was your first? Um, my first conference was in 1999. So yeah, I guess that makes me certainly an old timer. And somebody actually said, "Well, that was the year I was born," uh, which made me feel really good, and, and I definitely earned my old timer tag on my on my name badge this year. Well, one thing that I found very interesting is my first conference was Annapolis in 14. Um, I was going to do a post, and I'm going to do it later. Like, I don't remember nobody. I didn't talk to nobody. 
Uh, it, I don't know. It just wasn't remarkable. I think it was one day in, one day out. And then I looked at it and like, of course, she was on a board on that one. I looked, look, you can look at the app and download the old uh, programs. But then let's fast forward uh, a new life. Um, I remember my first conference again in 2018, I believe, in Reston. And uh, share that story real quick, how that's how I think we got connected. Sure. So I was co-chairing the conference with Scott Rappaport um, from St. Joe's. And uh, we were having a great time at the conference. Uh, it was uh, one, of my, one of my favorites. I've actually co-chaired two conferences. Um, so that was my second time co-chairing a conference. And um, we we're kicking off the conference. And we're, we said that we we're going to make it fun and engaging and everything else. So beginning of the conference, we're up on stage and somebody comes up and says, we have these keys. Somebody lost their keys. Um, so of course me thinking that I'm funny and not really actually being funny, thought I was going to make a joke out of it and said, we're raffling off a car. You get a car, you get a car thinking I'm Oprah, clearly not. Um, but the, those keys belong to none other than uh, good old Phil here. So And it was funny because uh, I actually thought it was funny because, one, I lose everything. And, two, it was, like, very blatant to who I was. It wasn't just, like, keys. It was, like, someone with the Alpha Phi Alpha lanyard, Alpha Phi Alpha, the fraternity lanyard, and the whole table looked at me because they won. They knew I was, like, the only black dude at the table. And then my other frat brother who was happened to be there, Justin Harris, was, like, I don't lose my stuff, Philip, so that's yours. And so that was great. But, okay, I want to fast forward because all these conferences, I think I want to bring back to the part of – the identification of people and um i actually just want to know like what how this came about so you have been very credited with saying okay call people directly say i won't i think you can do this and you do it like with me and natalie and stuff so can you tell me like i i remember the phone call but i i don't know why you picked me i I just don't i still want to hear i don't know i mean yeah i mean i think it's interesting i i uh, this is the thing that I love most about Eastern Ace is as a newcomer back in the late 90s, um, I showed up. I didn't, didn't know anybody, know anything, and um, I signed up for a committee. Um, and then I was on this committee, and I was like, okay. It was, it was the Professional Exchange Committee, which is now part of Connections, which set up you know visits to um, employers and career centers and visit employers. And I was working in an employer relations role at the time, and um, I said, oh, I'll be on that committee. That'd be great. So I reached out to and, you know, reached out to the chair and said, hey, I have these two companies that I think would be great for this. I already spoke to them and everything else. And they said, you know, um, I'm actually retiring and won't be doing this committee uh, anymore. Would you like to chair it? And so I, I, I was like my first time and I'm like, I don't know. I don't understand. Um, so I had some folks that, you know, from the board that reached out to me immediately and are like, Jill, you know, this is a great opportunity and really helped and shepherded me through that way. Um, I have, I've been on a committee every year since and the board, I've been on the board. I've had four, four different terms on the board. Um, so, um, so yeah, I was director of technology at one point. I was a um, I think the member services or something. Um, and then of course uh, a president. Um, but you know, I think the best part about Eastern Ace to me is just that that kind of family oriented kind of experience, but the ability to grow your skills um, in areas that you you don't have necessarily in your day to day job. And so, when you see somebody that's talented, um, knowing that they're talented, and want to see them kind of grow within the field, you know, I, I feel like that's part of my job as a more senior person within the organization to say, hey, you know, I see this in you. And here, this is going to be able a way that help you grow within your skill set that will help you kind of in your in your day to day job and moving your career forward. So, you know, when I when I met you, Phil, I was like, okay, this 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 guy's got something right. Um, And I I love I feel like I can see that sometimes um, in people. And I just want to be like, Hey, sometimes I'm the first person that doesn't see the best qualities in myself. Um, and I know that there's other people out there like that that don't necessarily see how talented they truly are. Um, and sometimes you just need that, hey, I see you. I see your talents. And, you know, here's a way that we can help to kind of move that forward. So I definitely, I think that's one of the cool things about Eastern Ace is um, as a, a leader within the organization, um, being able to say, tap you and say, hey, look, you have so many talents how can I help or what roles within Eastern East will help you to get other skill sets um, to help you build and grow in your career? Yeah, and I think the part that I want to just really reiterate, it wasn't a blanketed, like, join a committee, 
email. I think the fact that someone individually reached out to me meant a lot. Yeah. And, you know, at first I thought I was in trouble. I was like, what do you want? Like, you know, like, I just want to talk to you for five minutes. I was like, oh, God. Most times when someone said they just want to talk to me real quick, it's like, you know, I'm going to the principal's office. But the fact that I was like, okay, I, I, I answered the call. And then I think concurrently, I don't know if you conspired about this. Maybe you can co-sign. I got another same thing was like <laughs> from Jen saying, I think you should like, and I heard, I, like, I heard it from two people. Maybe I should give it a try. And I think that I've started, and I see that now where I'm like, okay, people even in my own office, I'm like, yo, just jump on that. You know, I told Anna to jump on um, that because I'm like, you know, hearing it from me directly was better than just some generic email thread. I was like, I think you can do it. And I, I can introduce you to the person so you can have a conversation. Yeah, I mean, I think... I think that it's all about those connections, right? And I see myself as, um, you know, if I can help and make those connections, I think that's really, really where it's at, right? So, um, you know, to say, okay, not only do I see you and I see your talents, um, but I'm going to make that connection in terms of what that really looks like um, and how we can. So I, I, I love to like see new professionals coming up and saying, okay, hey. I'm going to come to you. It's all about that personal connection. I think that's what's so special about Eastern Ace. We're small, family-oriented. So therefore, me coming and saying, if I send a personalized email, hey, do you have a few minutes to chat? That means a whole lot more than a blanket email that's going out, a non-personalized. So I try to do that a lot. Even last year as president, just sending out little thank you notes to folks, written notes, and making sure that people feel seen and heard and appreciated. Um, And that goes a long way. And especially as you're you're talking to folks and saying, hey, I see you and I know your talent. And I mean, it's great to admire from a distance. But if you can really kind of do that, you know, for a board member to walk up to a new professional and say, hey, that was a great session. I appreciate that. You know, maybe we should do look into webinars or other topics. Um, that's really kind of in, the engaging part that that I think makes a difference. It's that person personalization. Well, this has been great. I know you're busy. And like I said, you know, shaking hands, kissing babies. <laughs> um, so, you know, this is the part. I do it all the time. Allow, you know, shout outs and, and ways that people can follow up with you. So shout outs and plugs. So just things, you know, people you want to show love to. And then if anyone wants to connect with you, you know, to learn about careers or Eastern Ace or whatever, where would they connect with you? Sure. Like, I mean, I think. Uh, shout outs. Gosh, I mean, there's too many to actually ever say. Um, I mean, being kind of rolling off the board this year, um, I think I have a few two days left of being on this board term. So a shout out to all the board members this year, uh, last year that served under me as when I was president, um, all the committee chairs. That's what really makes this organization go, um, you know, and just, you know, all my crew and kind of they know who they are. Um, And there's a long list of them, too. Um, And just those new professionals, too. Like, get involved. Just jump in. You won't regret it. Um, And I think that that, that's kind of the shout-out side. Getting in contact with me, I mean, I feel like my phone number's everywhere. Um, But, yeah. Maybe (laughs) maybe LinkedIn, you know. Don't do do the phone number. I'm certainly not, like, handing it out on the corner or anything like that. But um, I feel like everybody knows how to get in contact with me. But, I mean, hit me up any way. Um, LinkedIn is a great way to hit me up. But, you know... um, I'm happy to have that call or that few minute chat or grab a coffee or whatever it is. Um, you know, so, uh, hit me up on LinkedIn for sure. Um, and you know, if you want to have a chat, I'm, I'm open to that as well, of course. Well, thank you so much. I bet this is your first podcast experience, but not your last. Um, <laughs> thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your kindness. As I said, uh, you are goat, you know, Jill the goat. Um, I think we should get t-shirts that say that. And, uh, just thank you so much for your time. Okay. Hello, Positive Filter listeners. This is segment uh, number three of this conference recap, my one-on-one interviews. You know, I'm just picking my friends, people that I connected to through Eastern Ace, and just asking about their experience and and just asking a few questions, getting them out, you know, in the hallway uh, in a little bit of time. So um, it's with great pleasure, I think, uh, I'm assuming newcomer? Newcomer? Yeah. Okay, so I got some experiences I got. One person that was the co-chair of the actual conference, I got the GOAT, and now I have a newcomer's experience. So it's a really holistic recap. And so I'm actually joined by a good friend of mine through another association, VASE, which is Virginia. So we we rep in VA, um, Monique Sample, and she's from VCU. And I just want to give her, you know, one, her accolades. She just won an award for diversity. So shout out to that and all the work that she's doing. And then, uh, Monique, I know... 
we're about to release another episode, but um, tell the listeners a little bit about who you are, and I'll just, you know, have a quick conversation. Yeah, um, thanks for having me. Um, I always appreciate connecting with you and chatting it up with you, um, so I appreciate the, the connect here. Um, Monique Sample, Virginia Commonwealth University. I've been there for four years, uh, four years, June 11th, so um, I am nine months into my new role. Um, I am the diversity program and employer partnership specialist. And basically what I do is I work on identity and career. I work with our students and our employers on creating a space for students to feel seen, heard, valued, and feel like they feel comfortable in their career when they get into that space and understanding how to advocate for themselves, how that self-efficacy, um, knowing how to navigate the career spectrum um, in their identity. What does that look like? Navigating some of the tough questions and some of the tough conversations that we may have had to navigate on our own, just, you know, and may have dealt with them in bad ways. So microaggressions, um, how we may have managed those just poorly, but how do I teach our students how to handle those in a better fashion, right? Um, communication skills, networking skills, things that aren't being taught in the classroom, but centered around their identity. And so this is your first experience at Eastern Ace. You know, you've been really um, involved. I think, you know, not think, I know you're on the board of Virginia. So like, yeah. you know, kind of like different rooms, like, you know, you're at that room, you're you're known, you're doing it. And then in, in this room, and I say not known, you're winning awards, but like, this is new, this is a new space. So can you tell us the difference about your preparation coming to this conference as opposed to VASE, which you went to both conferences this year? Yeah. So my preparation for this this conference, one, I was prepared to kind of just sit in the back and observe. Um, I came into it wanting to um, explore, wanting to learn and grow and get the lay of the land, see where I would fit in, who I would fit in with, um, getting to know people, connect with people, but also learn, see what I would get from the sessions. Um, what information can I take back to my campus? What information can I utilize in our office, whether it's for me or for someone else? I'm always considering that even if it's a session that I might gravitate towards and at first it really, I think, oh, I would love to hear this information. And then at some point the conversation shifts and it's, I'm like, mm, this really isn't for me. My mind always goes to who could this be for? Because it's for someone it's always going to tie back to our students. So who either in our office or on our campus can this be tied to? And how can I give that information to them? So let me keep the notes, let me keep that information in mind so that I can give them that information and say, hey, I was at this conference and I got this great set of information. Here's the contact, here's the information. It would be worth connecting with them to get that for our students. For this student population, so that's a that's a great strategy. So obviously, it turns into an opportunity to be a connector, right. and you take it and you pass it on. Yeah. So you know, let's you know practice what I preach. You know, we talk about networking and all that stuff. Yeah. What was some things like if you were a student or, or not a student? Like I said, what are some of the things that you had to like kind of coach yourself and strategize for yourself that you would tell a, a student to do for a networking situation? Yeah. So I'm naturally an, an introvert. Um, so. It, this was a larger conference for me, and I have to prep myself. I have to prepare for going into spaces that I have to be, um, like, on. I have to navigate <laughs> speaking to people, introducing myself, talking to, to people that may be extroverted, may, you know, want to talk more than I am, um, but then also holding space for myself to step away and refill my proverbial battery, right? So it's balance. Um, that's how I navigate these types of spaces is balancing those moments. So go into it open-minded um, and willing and open to talking to, to, to people and connecting with people, but then also knowing when I have to step back and say, okay, I need a break, and I need to fill my cup. I need to, to breathe a little bit because 
I'm starting to feel drained and I don't want to get to a point where I no longer want to be around people at all and I don't want them to have a um, negative perception or a negative um, interaction with me because I'm at my max and fill for peopling. <laughs> you yeah. get what I'm saying? Yeah, so one of the things I'm thinking about, and then, so that was concrete strategies, like break out, go to different rooms, you're doing that, um, and then you're, leave, you know, leave and recharge. I think now I want to, you know, as the, the the extrovert in the room, but more the relationship building, what was the way that you prepared to meet people? And when I say that, like, how did you kind of identify who you wanted to talk to? And and then did you set, do you set, I mean, I'm just curious, maybe you didn't, do you set, like, people goals? Like, I'm going to talk to you know, this person from this school, I already looked them up on LinkedIn or something ahead of time. I didn't really have a strategy for who I wanted to connect with. I had already connected with some people um, either through an event or through um, some connections that I made through you or through other people. Um, or, But I did not have a strategy for I, I want to meet these specific people or this number of people. I didn't have a goal in mind. It was just how can I connect and grow? And, you know, who can I meet? Um, Not necessarily how many. There wasn't like a number of people. It was just who can I organically connect with? Um, And that's, for me, those organic connections, that's when you get the most meaningful relationships and develop those more meaningful relationships. And um, that's when the, the work really gets done. Because then that's when the conversations that need to be had on both campuses for the students, for the people that really need it, that's when that happens. And then my my last question then for you then is, um, what are you going to do now that you got this? What is your... uh you know, either people strategy or recharge strategy. What is your what are your thoughts like? How do you how are you going to debrief for this when you get back home to Richmond? What, what's your debrief strategy? Yeah, so um, I've got my notes, um, and I'm going to take the information that I have gathered from from all of the sessions that I attended. Um, I also have purchased the um, to be able to watch the sessions that were recorded. So I'm going to go and watch those sessions once those are available as well so that I can see there's content that I didn't get to see, you know, so I want to be able to see those sessions as well and gather that information. Um, The information that I got from the sessions, I want to share back with um, the people within the office. And so we have a share drive that we have um, the ability to share the information that we get from either webinars or conferences. And so I will type up all of the information that I gathered and share that out. But my director, who was also at the conference, um, she and I have a plan to kind of sit down and meet at some point to kind of debrief and talk about our experiences, the things that we learned from the conference um, and how it can impact our office and or some of our practices. Um, a lot of the information that I learned about about was related to DEI. and i There was a heavy focus, and there were a lot of sessions that centered around DEI, and i which I really appreciated about this conference. And because the work that I do is focused on DEI, that helps me. That helps me bring some new ideas, new perspectives, new things that I can try on our campus um, to work with our campus partners, to work with our students, things that I can bring um, to elevate the work that I'm doing with our students and for our students. Well, that was dope. Um, and I think, you know, that's a great strategy. And I just took some notes that these are great things to do. Um, and I definitely look up to you and always uh, appreciate collabing with you and just your ideas and your your insights and creativity. You're, you're a great person, uh, Monique. I always say that. I give people flowers all the time um, I because, I you know, I care about people and I want them to know I care about them so uh this is the part of the show shout outs and plugs you know things that you you're proud of or people you want to shout out and then plugs I mean just main ways that people can connect with you if they want to follow up um that you're comfortable with yeah well first and foremost I, you know I, I gotta shout you out I mean you have been doing doing the damn thing I know you said no cursing but you've been doing the damn thing and I 
commend you and I applaud you for all the work that you've been putting in, um, all the things that you've been doing. You've had a difficult year. Um, and despite all of the challenges, despite the, the hard road that you've had, that your family has had, you have really done the work. And I'm super proud of you. And if no one has said it, I've said it. And I love you for it. So, you know, I know, you know, um, I can I consider you to be a genuine friend, brother, and you know, like I'm here for you. I got your back. And so. goofball, shout out, goofball. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like you know, I how people can connect with me, LinkedIn. I'm Monique. I'm Monique Sample. Um, M O N I Q U E. Last name Sample. S A M P L E. Um, you can connect with me on IG. Um, M C sample four two nine. That's my IG um, name, and yeah, that's that's the best ways to connect with me. I got rid of my Twitter. Nah, I yeah. can't fool with that. So you know. Yeah. So I'm gonna um, put this contact information in the show notes. You know, for all the different guests that say they you know open to connecting. So check out the show notes for this whole collab episode smashed together. And uh, thank you so much, Monique and. Uh, have a great, safe travels home. Absolutely. Taking a picture of us now. All right. Well, you got to get in, Phil. <laughs> okay, I got to get in this picture. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm actually starting right now while I'm in the picture. <laughs> yeah, um, let's go. So, as you know, I'm doing a, a recap. Um, joining uh, everyone that's joining me uh, is friends and, and members of Eastern Ace. And so I'm just doing a, a conference recap with different perspectives, different guests, you know, um, and just combine it all together. You know, I had the one of the co-chairs of the conference talking about their experience planning this conference. I had uh, Jill Milan earlier on, who's been at 20-some conferences. Uh, I had just now Monique um, talking about being a newcomer. And then I got uh, my colleagues who are not newcomers, but they're my colleagues. So we're gonna, maybe that's a different perspective about coming here and, you know, it's not Mason. So uh, I'm going to let uh, Rachel and Anna introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Rachel Stockdale. I am a career advisor at um, Uni- University Career Services at George Mason University. And I am also part of the Granson Scholarships Committee here at Eastern Ace. And I am Anna Lobaton. I have been, this is my second conference here at EACE. I was a part of the PR and Marketing Committee, and now recently for the next conference for 2024 will be the committee chair for PR and Marketing. And yeah, I mean, definitely between my first and second year has been a very different experience, and I'm really happy that I get to share that here today. So one of my thoughts I want to ask you both, because I guess this is, is this both your second year, right? What was some of the main differences of going into a conference the second time? What was the way that you prepared that was different? What are the expectations that were different? You know, just talk about that sophomore year feeling. Yeah, so for me, it was definitely different just because of the fact that I was I transitioned roles within my first and second year of coming to EAs so when I came last year it was I was on the employer engagement coordinator position so I wasn't really doing much work with employers I considered myself like a gatekeeper before passing uh, contacts specific contacts within our office to employers so coming in last year It was something completely new to me because I last year I was completely new into higher education because I came from a completely different industry. And it was just more of soaking it all in, almost like being a sponge and being able to go ahead and learn as much as I can from other individuals and really use that time to meet other individuals um, within different um, colleges and universities across the eastern the eastern side of the U.S., Now, shifting to my second year, which was this conference, I am now working more closely with employers, so it was definitely a little bit more different when preparing because I was able to see through the attendees list who I kind of seeing who I wanted to connect with, seeing their LinkedIn profile, seeing if they do something that I do similarly on the employer side, and then also really looking at the conference agenda of the different sessions that were going on. A lot of them, it, you do see that it's more focused on students while others are focused more on employers and really being able to 
take away a bit more in how I can use the, uh, what I learned here at EA through the conversations that I have with employers now moving forward. And really honing in on the networking skills, I think, was this year specifically. Um, as Phil mentioned earlier, we had quite a big number of uh, our staff from George Mason University come to this conference. And for myself, this being my second year, I wanted to make a goal of making sure that the newcomers felt comfortable, but also focusing on myself on, I'm not going to stay with my Mason peeps. I want to be able to go ahead and actually meet, kind of separate myself and really meet other individuals. So that way, when maybe I talk to someone from, let's say, Boston University, they're like, oh, you're with Mason. Like, I've talked to Phil. I talked to Rachel. I talked to Melanie. I talked to Kaylee. I talked to other people within your within your office and it's like not all of us coming as a group being like hey individual from Boston University have you met myself Rachel and like naming the rest of the people in our office so between the first two years I guess the key takeaways were really honing in on the networking and really having a set agenda of what I wanted to achieve and learning um, from these sessions and then also finding out those takeaways instead of just like let me stick with the people my comfort zone and really trying to step out of that all right and then uh rachel what was your thoughts about that too yeah exactly i think that i really would resonate with everything that anna said um definitely putting more preparation into um preparing for for this event and seeing who was going to be here and who i wanted to connect with um and also, yeah, just taking advantage of all the opportunities to connect with new people. Um, that's really, you know, the power of this type of uh, organization, just having access to so many amazing people and um, ideas and thoughts. And so that that was really a great difference between, you know, the, f- the first year and the second year, really taking advantage of that. Um, I would also say, I think, you know, after I had such a great experience at the at the conference last year, I joined a committee, the Grants and Scholarships Committee, and being a part of it throughout the year and, you know, con- continuing to connect with the members of my committee every month, I think I felt much more connected to the overall mission of Eastern Ace. And so I think, you know, being a part of how, you know, some – some people are able to come to this conference by, um, you know, providing those grants and scholarships and being, being one of those people who, um, is looking at those applications. Um, it is, it's really nice to be able to, you know, meet, meet the people who won the scholarships and, um, you know, hear about their experiences and how this has been a benefit to them. It made me really happy about being a part of that, you know, just a small part of what's going on at Eastern Ace. But um, so, yeah, definitely join a committee. It really, I think, enhances the experience. So I think my next question, and I think, you know, I think this is really good, is what was your what was your feeling? Like we did come heavy, right? We many people. I'm going to share just really what I thought, and then I want to hear your thoughts. But like coming to large conferences and hearing from others reiterated the feeling that I'm actually happy where I'm at. Like when people would come up to us and say, oh, you're doing that, you're doing this. And it made it feel like even our little micro, remember we celebrate our own wins, but we thought it was no big deal. That's just what we do. But then you come to a conference and you realize like no one's doing what you're doing or no one's doing the IDI or no one's doing these things that we're doing. It kind of makes you kind of gassed up. So to go to a conference and it's almost being able to take yourself out of your normal George Mason and see like, wow, we're, we're pretty good. You know, like, um, what was your feeling about that? Like that, that opportunity to see outside of your institution and how you're viewed and stuff. Yeah. For like us, we were very fortunate to have two separate presentations, um, here at the conference this year. And I think being able to share our story to other colleges and universities is helpful because, Yes, one university can think we're we're doing all this innovation, we're doing such creativity, we're really getting in touch with our students. But I think one of the the sessions, and it was one that Angelica actually did yesterday with the IDI assessments of like really helping your career center 
also learn and being able to move forward is something that I don't think a lot of universities are doing just because of the fact that it's always very student heavy or like bringing in employers to being able to connect with these students as much as possible. But then you also have to take a step back and being like, what about our career staff? Like, are we really, are we really honing in our mission and are we really honing in the values that we bring and in incorporating and infusing it with our staff. So I think on that front, seeing the reactions and seeing the support also from our staff, like being able to come and show support and really provide other incentives and other feedback um, off aside from the presentation, which was great, being able to provide our own experience to it was definitely a big help and really being able to see how other universities are able to jot down notes on what they can bring back to their institution and really incorporate it because in the end you're you can only practice what you preach so if you're doing the work you'll be able to resonate that to to the students Um, because it all in the end it starts with yourself and then the knowledge and the effort and the time that you're putting into better yourself you're only being able to pass that along to the next generation or the next colleague or the next acquaintance that you'll be able to meet and for us here um, with the large group that Mason brought to Eastern Ace this year being able to kind of talk about what we've done and provide maybe one new idea or even taking an idea from another university being able to to really bounce off of each other but in the end I know it was a long answer for me but practice practicing what you preach I think is something that um to Phil's point made me feel very like oh wow like we're we're doing it like we we're doing this for us and then we're also like we have those resources for our students to really take advantage of excellent and what about you Rachel yeah I mean I would agree I think that 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 IDI session you know kind of hearing you know Angelica talk about what we have done in our office and then seeing a lot of other people saying, you know, we're not doing anything like this at our institution. Um, I think that, yeah, it made me feel really just grateful and proud to be a part of this career center. Um, and I, I also just, I mean, I love that Eastern Ace is all about really learning and growing and teaching each other. And so I do think, you know, talking about these things and what, you know, best practices at our universities um, with other folks at different career centers um, is really going to help to create more of an equitable environment um, for for everyone. So, um, yeah, really happy to be a part of that. Yeah, and it don't. It is also good that your boy got gassed up, and when they say George Mason, they're like, "Dang, you know Philip." I'm just joking, <laughs> um, but um, seriously, <laughs> I was like, "Oh, my gosh!" So um, you know, it's been great, and, and it's been a great conversation. Um, and you know, as we you know tail in, uh, shout outs and plugs. So you know, just show love to who you want to show love to, and then I would say plugs ways that people can connect with you professionally or whatever you feel comfortable. Yes, I would say. Shout out to all my people at George Mason. We really represented um, at the at the conference this year. Everybody told me, oh, yeah, you're from Mason. Oh, yeah, shout out to Saskia because everybody's like, oh, you're from Saskia's crew. That's a good crew. So, yes. Um, also, shout out to my grants and scholarships committee because they're awesome and really appreciate them. And then all shout out to you, Phil, because, you know, you were with us for our first conference experience and you were like, let me inv- introduce you to all these people. And so you're a real connector. So shout out to you. Thanks. <laughs> no, um, for me, like just reiterating, uh, reiterating Rachel here, uh, shout out to the Mason crew, like the those who attended the conference and those who even presented, because I know we had um, a couple of first time presenters and they blew it out of the water. And then even from our executive director, being able to provide um, such value in her presentation as well shout out to the pr and marketing committee as well um we are looking for members especially now that i'm co-chair so (laughs) definitely i'll let you know how to hit me up and honestly phil like to rachel's point like it's it's really a huge shout out to you because obviously last year you really took 
it was a smaller group of us last year. I think it was a group of four of us total, two newbies. And for Rachel and I, you took us under your wing last year and it was like, hey, I'm going to introduce you to these people, these people, these people. And then coming into the conference this year, I met you last year because I met you through Phil. And then even being able to take the time to say, these are people I would like for you to connect with because I feel like you'll either vibe with them or they'll pre- be able to provide you some type of insight on what we're doing in the office or just in life in general and on a personal level. Um, so shout out to all of the committees um, this year because we've put in numerous hours for work for tech specifically, just being able to get the tech up and running and then even the conference chairs, like being able to go ahead and put on a successful conference. And even though we don't know the location for next year, I'm sure it's going to be a fun location and it's going to be a fun time, especially with all the people and even newcomers. Like if you're really debating on coming out to Eastern Ace, hopefully this podcast and this recap and probably the podcast you've heard throughout the days here at EA's will really allow you to say, hey, let me not doubt myself and let me just go like right on in. So, Well, thank you. You can follow both of them. They didn't say their shout outs, but they, you follow both of them on LinkedIn. I'll put their LinkedIn and the URL in the um, show notes. You know, this is the last segment. So as I finish this, please share this episode with a family member or friend. Also, please consider contributing to the Jeff Kirsch Anti-Hunger Fund. That's the name of my late father-in-law, Jeff Kirsch. I say every episode I do is dedicated to his memory. Uh, It has been great. It has been a great conference. Um, I'm really excited, and I'm just happy that everyone got along and uh, got to connect with people, and that's what it's all about. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Shout out to everybody, and uh, we're out. Thank you for listening to Positive Filter, a podcast that focuses on family, friends, career with a little self-help along the way if you enjoyed this podcast please share it with your family and friends and like the facebook page spreading positivity of movement thanks for listening